Hey everyone, I'm Charting Man, Dan with the Chart Guys. I've been trading the cannabis sector for over 13 years. Ugly end of the week with an all-out dump on Friday. Really a lot of deja vu with last week's Thursday dump. We'll talk about the similarities. We're going to go off of the video from last weekend. There's a lot of things to touch up on and follow up on with regards to that. And this is when it's important to be paying attention. You know, it's a lot more fun when things are going up, but these are the times where we need to be protective and managing things and, and on top of things when it gets ugly. So let's look at the charts. So we're going to start with the U.S. sector first. I was paying attention to those names a bit more this week as consolidation began in the entire sector. So to pick up from where we left off last weekend's video, the four-hour lower high was the most likely scenario in the U.S. names. Talked about how it was a second chance. Last Thursday was a big wake-up call you get the bounce for the second chance to exit some positions, free up some capital. It's a second chance for the bears as well. I was then looking for a tightening range to form, but the bounce attempt on Thursday saw no follow through. And we just rolled over and confirmed the daily downtrend. Today was the broader market yet again. Again, look at the MSOS in the 15 minute time frame and the all out dump. And look at the S&P 500 on the 15 minute time frame. Not quite as ugly, but the same complete bear control. As I talked about in the video last time, when all major sectors are hitting the low of the day at the same time, it needs to be a flashing light in your brain. QQQ, XLF, XLV. When that's happening, it tells us money is leaving the market. That is not good for risk on assets. That happened last Thursday. It happened again this Friday on this really big pullback. And IWM, the Russell 2000, was leading the way to the downside as well. It's absolutely related. Today was brutal in the sense that Stocks sold off, commodities sold off, crypto sold off. I mean, the list here on the right of my crypto names, they were all 15 to 25%. This is with some bounce taking place. So, you know, this is not just, I know, again, I talked about it last video. People have their blinders on and they're just watching the cannabis sector. What's the cannabis news? No, this is the market saying we're going risk off a bit. And, you know, the dollar's exploding to the upside and there's, you just have to remember that there's so many things in play with the market and how much money is being sloshed around on a daily basis. And this is another example where uh, this can the cannabis sector will be sold off the hardest in any market fear, which is why I've been talking about. The broader market is as euphoric as it can possibly be. We have to be prepared for when that ends. And right now it has ended, at least for the time being, in the sense that we've seen a couple weeks in a row of pullback. I mean, right now, the S&P 500 is only 3% from the all-time high. What if we pull back 7% from the all-time high? We just have to plan for that. And so, as I, you know me as a, an active trader, this is why I don't just sit as a leaf blowing in the wind. Yes, we know there's catalysts for cannabis. Yes, we know the vote in the election, and maybe Florida gets legalization. But in the meantime, there's going to be 20% moves back and forth, 40% moves back and forth, and so need to protect against things that are completely outside of the sector, but will have a potential impact. So we also talked about how we now need to be cautious. Again, I was saying I'm bullish, but we got to put on our bare glasses and be watching for this potential rising wedge. And so if, even if we bounce from here, we're, in a, we're at a point right now where this sector and its participants retail, they paint themselves into a corner so often. And it's the same thing that happened the last time safe was a sure thing or really close or whatever it was. And then we just fell apart. When was that? That was here. This was everybody pricing in news that did, did not happen. And in my opinion, you know, a lot of this move up the last couple of weeks before the last seven days is people pricing in April news. And maybe we get it. But if we do not get it, the market will have inaccurately priced in bullish April news and it will add downward pressure. And so, you know, if we don't get Schedule 3 or any word from the DEA, and if we don't get any progress on safer being attached to whatever bill, then, you know, we have a long summer ahead of us. We just have to remember that. So we are now in a daily downtrend. This is a lower high and lower low. We know that the next time we bounce, Anything under 1034 is just a daily lower high. That means we can bounce 10% from here and just form a daily lower high. So it's a clear daily downtrend now, but it's also trying to set a weekly higher low from where we came from. What's not a good sign is that we retraced over 50%. That's a 62, 63% retracement. So a month's move 
given back in just seven days, not all of it given back, 63% of that move in just a seven days. We got an hourly downtrend. Anything under the high of today is just an hourly lower high. We could bounce 5% and set an hourly lower high. So again, remember how it took us one time frame at a time. We got to change the daily trend, then the weekly, then the monthly. It took us months to shape this move up. And so now we're just on the shorter term time frames where the bears are taking back control and it's one time frame at a time. You've got to confirm the hourly uptrend. If you do, you zoom out to the daily. You then have to confirm a daily uptrend. Until we confirm a daily uptrend from here, again, unless it's a news 10% plus move, until we confirm a daily uptrend from here, the bears have control of the daily trend. And we can keep dropping. You, I mean, you see how thin it is. Once selling pressure starts, there's a gap down here. Gap down there, it's 787 to be keeping an eye on. But once that selling pressure starts, it is the, the bid support is not there. And again, that last Thursday from the high to the low, we dropped, it was more brutal. We dropped 15%. Today, 11%. And, you know, it works both ways. We've had big green days as well when there's a lot of buying pressure, but uh, we are in wait and see mode and there is no news. And again, I know everybody's looking and pointing to all these catalysts and yes, absolutely, but nothing concrete has happened. We have to be realists. We have not gotten any concrete news. We've gotten little tidbits, which potentially increase probabilities and timeframes, but we don't have anything concrete in the sector. Nothing has changed in that regard over the last couple of months. True Leaf, so did some active trading in True Leaf today. We just got real tight and sideways. The bear break was at 12, and here we are quickly dropping, what, 15% from that level. It's just inside bar, inside bar. If you don't know what an inside bar is, Google chart guys, inside bar. Four in a row into the bear break. And so again, I was talking about, you know, sizing down on the four hour lower highs. I was talking about in the last video exiting so my core swing position in MSOS and TCNNF on that second chance bounce. And today I was adding that back. And so at 233, I'm adding back half of the true leave that I sold on the four hour lower high. And then added the second half once we broke 11. So that was pretty much entered half in the 1120s, other half in the 11 around or 1080 or so. So average right around 11. And then at the end of the day, exiting half of the reloaded TCNNF 1040. And so now what I have remaining has an average entry price of math 1060. And so now I still have a little cash to, to potentially maneuver with. I, I reloaded my MSOS core uh, too quickly, but I was nice and patient on Truly. And maybe we keep dropping from here. Maybe it's not, maybe I should have been even more patient. We'll see. But uh, again, just selling a little bit into some strength and reloading into weakness and watching what the weekly consolidation looks like because True Leaves Weekly, very clear guide, this EMA 12, held it, held it, and here it is again. Bulls really want to keep holding that, and I will definitely be sizing down. I mean, True Leaves still has the relative strength. TCNNF divided by MSOS. Today, we closed the strongest relatively in weeks. And so the relative strength is still keeping me around and focused on Truly, even even TCNNF divided by GTBIF, you know, still relatively strong there. Uh, but if we lose weekly EMA 12, I will size down and, uh, you know, redistribute my holdings because I recently went from uh, all MSOS in my core to 60% true leave. And so again, we'll see how that plays out. But I'm not going to sit through this sector slow bleeding all summer. I know that much. I learned that lesson 2011, 12, 13, trading this sector in the penny stock world. You do not hold this sector in the summer. Maybe this time different, but again, I've just, it's the kind of thing where if I make a mistake, it's going to be leaving money on the table and not giving back, you know, this entire move. Other than that, GTBIF daily downtrend confirmed, lower high and lower low. Weekly consolidation underway. You know, this is the kind of setup where we have to be cautious of the head and shoulders if we pull back any further, where we could bounce 10, 20% and just form, you know, if we pull back a bit more, we can bounce 20% and just form a weekly lower high. So you know, we desperately need news to prevent a slow bleed. 
AYRWF, again, these, these lower cap tier two names, they're going to lead percentage wise into strength and they're going to lead percentage wise on the way down. And so, you know, this was one of the better percentage moves on the move up, but now we're down 37% from that high to the low of today. And that's, you know, 80% more of a drawdown than what MSOS saw, you know, MSOS down 20% versus 37%. So it works both ways. But those of you that are trading these small cap names certainly know that by now. And if you don't, you should not be putting any significant capital in the market until you learn that lesson. But again, we're going to watch the hourly trends and the daily trends as our guide into next week and the broader market. How much more weakness do we see in the broader market? We can definitely keep pulling back there. So the Canadian names... Again, I talk about, you know, when I'm teaching people trading, I often talk about knowing when to pump the gas and pump the brakes. If you look at the amount of trades that I took, the dollar volume that I traded in ACB and CGC two weeks ago versus this last week, it's 10%. I took 10% of the trades, 10% of the volume, because here you've got a runaway breakout and here you've got sideways consolidation. There's still opportunity, but they're not comparable. I can't trade the same way here as I trade here, or I will give back all my money. You have to recognize the shifting market environment, just like you have to recognize when all three major sectors are hitting the low of the day at the same time, and you react to the information the market is giving you. The market told me we're consolidating sideways. I'm going to trade these names much less. The bears have had it real easy on ACB. It's one of the stronger names in terms of it hasn't given back as much. We're still holding daily EMA 12, which is good, but... The Bears have a clear line in the sand that they just keep winning off of. And the pattern, look at the pattern on the morning. Spike on the morning, give it all back afternoon. Spike, this one lasted minutes, give it all back at all afternoon. Spike today, give it all back all afternoon. And all three of those are at that resistance zone that we head into in extreme overbought conditions on short-term time frames. Again, if you're a Bear, if you short at 735 and put a stop at 745, you're risking 10 cents and the reward is 80 cents, you know, a dollar plus, 90 cents, whatever. I'm just rough ballparking it here, but you get the idea. The risk to reward says short that level as long as it's resistance. 745. So 45, 44, 43, 37. And for, I don't understand how people can look at that and say technical analysis is useless. Clearly, there's a ton of traders playing off that level. If you're rejecting by the level to the penny, there's information to be had by watching levels. Today, why did we spike? A huge, op, a huge uh, option order that expired today, zero-day expiration, uh, hit the tape. And this is the market reacting to that, just shooting straight up rejecting from resistance and just, you know, classic pump and dump, giving it all back. So if the bears are going to take over ACB, they want to see a break of 594. And that would confirm a daily downtrend. Higher low, lower high, and there will be a lower low if we break there. A lot of the other higher listed names have already done that. CGC, lower high, lower low. As soon as we break 893, that tells me take a step back. The bears are taking over in the short term. The bulls have lost their short-term momentum. And now we have a 10% plus pullback from there. So we zoom out. Is this the top of this move? Are we about to do the slow summer bleed? If there's no headline, it's entirely possible. But what bulls want to see for this time to be different is hold a back test of these EMAs, which are crossing bull for the first time in years and confirm a weekly uptrend. We haven't done that yet. Remember one time frame at a time, MSOS, we went through it all, daily, weekly, monthly. It took months to have an uptrend on all three of those time frames. CGC only did it on the daily on this move because it was fast and hard. Do it on the weekly, do it on the monthly. It's going to take a long time if that's going to shape up. Same thing, hourly and daily downtrend is our guide. We can see we're just struggling at EMA 12 resistance on all these bounces. And just quick rundown of these other names, SNDL. Again, daily downtrend confirmed as soon as we broke 212. Next support level is 191. Weekly consolidation on the verge. Bulls need to set a weekly higher low as soon as possible once consolidation begins. 
Still hasn't happened on the weekly chart for these names yet, for most of them. But just watch the lower highs and lower lows. This has to change if things are going to shift. HITI is still holding daily support, but if we break 210, we confirm the daily downtrend and it joins the other names. Cron, little daily downtrend, lower high, lower low. Who else do we have? GRWG. This one from last weekend was giving us a red flag early. Nothing but follow through. What was the red flag last weekend? That we were already testing daily support. I highlighted how much lower CGC would have to be for that to be the same scenario. But again, just daily downtrend and giving back half of this move up, if not more. Weekly consolidation already underway here in a big way. Truly have had, or now TLRY had bearish earnings. And, you know, some people want to look at this and say, oh, you know, should I scout it as a laggard? Remember what OGI told us? And I assume I stopped out of OGI today. I didn't even look. Stop under $2, yeah. So all out OGI, that was my runner position. $2 breaking. It was a beautiful run from, I forget where, sometime, somewhere around here. But um, that's that. Again, exit when I get the red flags, leave a runner to try and let it play out, but I'm not going to hold a slow bleed back. So my point was, OGI was a shining star bull. Lead bull, correlation, bullish correlation, very strong. And everything changed on dilution news. And that was evaporated instantly. TLRY, if you've got a gray cloud hanging over you, bad earnings, Clearly the weakest uplisted name that we've been following this entire time because of how much of this move has been given back. Listen to what the market is telling you. Yes, you know, sometimes things can over get over overdone, overbought, oversold, but when there's a news reason for something, it solidifies, it strengthens that uh, you know directional momentum oftentimes. And so the gap down open from earnings and then just every single day from there is a lower high and lower low. The high of the day is lower, the low of the day is lower. It's just complete bear control. And again, we're just giving back this move at this point. And there is a base of support at 160 to be keeping an eye on, but uh, you know, no good to give back that much of this move in a sector that's struggling so significantly. Psychedelics, I'm no longer in any psychedelic position. Stopped out of all my runners here as well. MNMD is a lead bull. Bulls want to hold 897. Potential for a head and shoulders if we hold it initially. But if we lose that level, weekly consolidation underway. We will zoom out. We'll scout a weekly higher low. We'll watch EMA 12. But again, that weekly pullback can be 30, 50. Eh, maybe not 50. Can be, but, you know, 30% plus pullback. But... Bears would need to break 897 for that to be underway. ATAI was another name that had a nice pop up. It's holding on, you know, no major red flags, but uh, just I don't I don't love the clarity on this chart personally. You know, I go through 10,000 charts and there's charts that I look and say just like MSOS to end last week. I know the most likely scenario on this chart. How? I've looked at tens of thousands of charts and I know what normal price action is. Yes. The less likely scenario can take place. Yes, news can change the most likely scenario and make the less likely scenario take place. But if I have a large enough sample size and I do it over and over and over again, if I keep playing the most likely scenarios that are most clear to me in my trading style, I'm going to come out ahead. And so I just look at ATAI in this weekly chart. I don't have a ton of clarity. And I just admit that to myself and say, I'm going to go trade something else where I do have clarity because there's 10,000 other choices of what I can trade out there. And so uh, that's just, you know, showing you when I'm analyzing a chart, do I want to trade ATAI? No, I don't, I don't love the clarity there. I don't feel I have an edge on most likely scenario. But it is a daily downtrend with the lower high and lower lows. It's just not a, a high volume pullback yet. And that's one takeaway that the bulls can take with them on CGC and these names, ACB, is this pullback is on declining volume. I mean, look at CGC's volume. Yeah, it's a pretty hard drop the last two days. Uh, from the close on Wednesday, you know, we're down, I don't know, 13% or something. But the volume is very, very low. That's really the only takeaway I can give the bulls at the moment. We've used up our back burners. You know, we had some nice back burners out there. Here's CGC 
First time we hit the back burner, hourly oversold conditions happens at seven. Oh no, it was back here. Happened on Wednesday, flush down into that 10% bounce or whatever it was. But again, once you're 17, once you lose, once you use that up, it's used up. And we know our strongest uptrends, hourly oversold marks the daily higher low, and you keep going from there. So if this were gonna be bulls keeping full control, it would have looked like this, confirm the hourly uptrend. As soon as you break the low of the day when that back burner hits, red flag. This is the, the daily trend is shifting. Momentum is being lost. And so the way, you know, my style, I didn't, I didn't take this trade, but my style is, you know, make an entry into hourly oversold. Let's say I got a, a bad fill, 880, and I sell half at 920, way before the top. My break even is now 840. I stick a stop loss at 840. If that's the daily high or low, I've got a great entry. If it's not and we get the red flag, I don't lose a dollar. So that's my style of, and that's essentially what I just did with True Leaf on that play. But yeah, there's red flags. And again, you know, paper rolls around with no news and the broader market keeps consolidating. We're going to keep seeing downward pressure. We are painted into a corner by hopeful retail that positions where ah, we're going to get this April news. And if we don't get it, the market incorrectly prices in stuff. And so we really need a headline to stop this momentum and try and recover a bit. And we'll see if we get it. I just know I don't love holding positions and hoping for a headline. Yes, I'm doing it right now with my core positions, but those are also very profitable core positions from making good entries back uh, down by those lows when the HHS news hit. All right, hope you had a good week. See how it all shakes out. It's fun. It's more fun when it's green, but it's all fun game. Do good things. We'll see you soon.